Good morning and welcome to the biennial PES convocation. I'm Scott Cook, Provost at the college. I want to say a particular thank you to your professors who value this program and brought you today. PES, um, Professional Effectiveness Skills, is a very important initiative for Madisonville Community College. Not only do we want you to be able to get the skills you need to be successful in your academic coursework, but also the professional skills that will help you to be successful in the workplace. It's my pleasure to introduce this morning's speakers. One will be speaking about how to get a job, Kayla Durham, IT Support Services from Baptist Health Madisonville. Second, how to keep a job, Peter Bowles, Resort Park Manager at Penny Ryle Forest State Park. And finally, how to excel at your job. Gary Russell, pharmacist and owner of Bluegrass Home Medical. Thank you again for being here today, and I would like to welcome Ms. Durham as your first speaker. Hi, good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. I'm going to speak briefly, and I'm going to hit some highlights on how to get a job. First things first, though, that I would like to remind you, is very important that you know the company that you're applying for. Uh, nowadays it's easy to get lots of information. Maybe you have family or friends that work there. If not, there's certainly a wealth of information on the internet. Know what your business is. Know who their customers are. Um, know what their vision is. Know what their values are. Research that company to make sure that, and read that job description thoroughly to make sure that that really is the job that you want and that you want to apply for. Uh, certainly after you do that, you, you move quickly on to the application process key point that I'd like to leave with you today on the application process is to make sure that application is completed thoroughly and fully. If there's something you don't know, put an NA there. I personally know there are companies in this town, not Baptist Health, that if an application is missing something, it immediately goes to another stack. They don't even read it. Good jobs. So make sure, don't leave the employer guessing about some of those. Make sure and fill those out. That would be my, my biggest uh, Point to make to you on the application process then we quickly a lot of times move on to the interview and I know I'm running fast through this because I want to make my main points at the end but we go to the interview process uh, some folks believe it doesn't really matter uh, we come go various places dressed different ways I will caution you it is still very 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 important no matter where you're interviewing that you're dressed appropriately if you're going for a corporate interview you're going to want something a little more formal business attire. If it's a casual business, you can get away with maybe slacks and a shirt or, or uh, slacks and a nice blouse. Just know your business and know what is appropriate. No dress does not get you the job, but I can tell you personally, sometimes it costs people jobs. That first 30 seconds that you're meeting and greeting someone is very, very important. You can talk to them 30 minutes later, but there's going to be some first impressions made. Um, very important. I rem and not only is the dress, make sure that whatever you wear is nice, neat, and pressed. Simple things as taking your hats off or, or various things, again, those can make or break it for you during the interview process. Those three first impressions. Um, make sure when you're interviewing, don't just be on time. 10 to 15 minutes is what is appropriate. Make sure that you're there early. Um, be prepared. When you go into that interview process, if you've researched that company, you already have some questions in your mind. Don't let the interviewer be the only one asking the questions. It's fine for you to ask questions. The only question that I would tend to tell you to, to stay away from on that first initial interview, uh, and maybe the only interview, is money. That can be discussed after an offer. I would tell you to stray, stray away from that. Um, when you go for the interview, stay calm, uh, smile, uh, learn before you go to the interview what thing, something that you can do that de-stresses you. Practice those things. Maybe it's deep breathing. Maybe it's that last look in the mirror to make sure that everything looks appropriately. Your hair, your hair is in place. Do whatever calms you because you need to walk in there with self-confidence and be, be proactive during that interview. Inquire about whatever. Again, take your questions uh, that you, you've come up with during that uh, research time. The, Best, I guess the most important tip I'd like to, to leave about an interview and one of the most important that will make you stand out from the rest of the group is that thank you note. It can be a handwritten note, handwritten note uh, it can be an email, whatever. Send that in, let that interviewer know that you're really interested in that job, you appreciate the time that they took, 
uh, to speak with you. Um, it sets you. It definitely sets you apart, and it's something that needs to be sent uh, fairly quickly. Don't wait a week. A week later, they may have already made a decision, and someone else has filled that position. So get that to them quickly. Again, it doesn't matter how. Um, the other thing, and I'll, I'll be uh, real brief, is looking around this room, I've got all ages that I'm looking at here. In the workforce, when you go to the workforce, it doesn't matter where you go, currently I have a, for example, I have a 23-year-old tech in IT, but that 23-year-old tech has to communicate with several 80-year-old physicians. We have multiple, multiple, multiple generations in the workforce. If I could leave one thing with you today, I think it is very important that you take the time to learn about each of those generations, the way that they do things. For example, if I said something, I wanted to take notes today, there would be some in this room that would take out a pen and paper. Others would pull out their phone or their laptop or whatever. There's a wealth of knowledge in all generations, but nowadays the workforce is working longer you're starting earlier, it's so important to learn those teamwork and skills, learn how to work with every generation that is there, whether it's baby boomers, Generation X, uh, the millennials. Someday you're going to be their supervisor because those folks are working towards retirement. Again, learn to work with all of those different ones. I'm going to give you one last acronym before I leave, and it's RAISE, something we all want after we get that job. So research and references, A for apply, I for interview, S, showcase your skills with self-confidence, and E, get ready to excel. As an employer, I'm looking for honest, on-time, professional in communication, team players, and goal-oriented folks. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Peter Bowles. I'm the park resort manager at Pinner Out Forest State Park. I'm just glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Johnson and Dr. Cook for having me today and all the other panelists. And my topic is how to keep your job. So you did acquire the job, so how do you keep your job? And I'm, I'm just going to let you know, starting out, that it's a tough world out there. It's a tough job market. When you get to the job, there's things that you have to do to keep your job. So one of the basic things that I found out is navigating politics on the job. And you say politics, well, the world is full of politics, even there's politics in government, there's politics in churches, there's politics wherever you go. So when you, when you get on your job, navigating politics is going to be a paramount situation that you're going to have to navigate. When I say politics, I mean that there's some people that's going to be in the in crowd, some people are going to be on the, on the outside. So how you navigate office politics and what that requires of you is showing yourself friendly to others. So when you get on the job, expand, 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 expand your circle of influence on your job. So one thing that you can do to expand your circle of influence is be friendly. I mean, be friendly to the janitor, be friendly to the secretary. Whoever are the gatekeepers in your organization, you want to be friendly to those, those people because those people might be the person that gives you a good review. That person might be the person that when there's a time of separation comes, they say, well, we need to keep uh, Sally versus keeping Tom. So you want to show yourself friendly. Be a team player. Be a team player on, on your job. I mean, there's people that I hire and they don't have social skills. They don't have social skills. They might have an A all through high school all through college, but they don't have good social skills. And sometimes you see these in organizations, sometimes in tech firms, you see people that they're really good at tech. They're the A students, but sometimes the B students are the ones that are managing those, those A students. Because why? Because they have good social skills, good social skills. And you might see in the same organization, the C's are probably a built organization. They're the concrete. They have the skill sets to actually build. And the D's and F. They might be the people that actually are calling the shots, writing the check for them. But why is that? Because they know how to, the politics of the organization. So having good functional skills sometimes is just not enough to get the job. You have to have those soft skills of being a team player, uh, being a person that can interact and, and, and know how to navigate, 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 navigate the work world. And, 
in, in my job, navigate, navigating requires me to uh, actually do things outside my job scope. One thing they put on your application uh, is that you, excuse me, one thing they will put on your a job description is to do anything that's necessary. So I have to find myself flexible doing whatever's necessary to make the organization succeed. So you will be called on to do things outside your job scope. So don't bark at that. So that's not my job. I had one young man that said, hey, I asked him to pick up some boxes. He said, well, no, that's outside my job description. So what happened to him? He was terminated. He was terminated. So we all have job duties that's outside our job scope that we have to perform. So. What, what a job keeping your job entails is show your work, show your worth. So they hired you to make sure that the customer is satisfied. The customer is paramount. The customer, without the customer, you would not be in business. And in organ any organization is about pleasing the customer to the customer. So whatever it, it entails you to do, please the customer. Your, your job is requiring that because that keeps the company going. So if you're not pleasing the customer, then your business is not going to be in business. That business is not going to be in business long. So please keep that on your mind. The customer is right. The customer is the priority. So one other thing too, that so you, you have your you have your job skills. You have your job skills. Just because a person is a black belt, they might have a black belt, but that doesn't mean that they're the expert. That means that they have just obtained that through training that black belt, so that doesn't actually mean that they're expert. There's more development in your job when you get your particular position. There's more development that you have to acquire. So just be flexible. Be flexible. No drama, please. Drama is one thing that can get you in trouble seriously. No, no drama on, on job. Employers hate drama. They hate drama people. So that's a, that's a big no-no. So if you want to be drama, go to a drama school <laughs> and be in drama, major in drama. But just be. Be, like I said, show your worth. Show your worth to your employer. Always reinvent yourself because when the time of separation comes, you don't know when the time, they're going to say, I picked Tom over Sally because she showed her work. Thank you. First, I want to apologize to the lady I about backed over in the parking lot if she's in here. <laughs> Just backing up, not finding a parking place. I'm Gary Russell. I'm owner of Bluegrass Pharmacy and Bluegrass Home Medical, and, and uh, I'm talking about how do you how do you excel at a job once you get it. And uh, the other speakers mentioned some of the things that I was going to bring up. Uh, you know, the obvious answer is that you know what the goals of, the, of your job are and the expectations of your job, and you excel you excel at it. Well, that's that's elementary. That's what. But, but do you always know what the what the vision for your company is? You know, the vision for my company is to be the, the best and most comprehensive health care provider in this area. And we've, we're slowly getting there. We're not there yet. Uh, so it's important that you ask questions and you understand exactly what the vision for your company is. Because when you understand not just what you're supposed to do, but what's the vision for the ownership or what's the vision for my, my boss, uh, then I think you can buy into what, what they're wanting to, wanting to get across and the, and the kind of service that they want to provide. Uh, you know, I, I think that, that uh, you want to surround yourself uh, with people that, uh, some of the other speakers, they also talked about getting to know the people that you're working with. Uh, I think that's very important. Find a mentor in that organization that you admire. You, you, you like the way they, they carry themselves. You like what they do on their job. Uh, there's a wealth of information that you can gather from people older than you and people that are younger than you. you know, I'm 61 years old. I, I'm not that big on technology. I've got my son works for me or works with me, works for me too. <laughs> but uh, he knows I, there's apps he showed me on the phone that I can that we can use in our business to increase uh, the type of productivity that we want we want to produce. So you can always gather information from the people that are older than you and that are younger than you. Uh, I want to hire people that are smarter than me. I don't have a problem with doing that. I've got, there's four of our pharmacists in our, in our company, all of them are smarter than me. My ego is not so much that I, have, I think that I have to do it all. Uh, my son's smarter than me. Felicia's daughter's a pharmacist across the street, she's smarter than me. I have two other pharmacists, they're all smarter than me. You got to have people that are around you and work with you that can come up with ideas. 
I don't want to be stagnant. If I if, if I was ever stagnant in my business, then then I wouldn't have a business. I've been in business 40 years, and if I'm not willing to change, you know, business evolves, pharmacies evolve, home medical business evolve. If I'm not willing to change and do the things that, that it takes to to change with the with the, with the uh, industry, then I'm gonna, I'm not going to have a business. So it's important that you be able to be flexible. Uh, get organized. You know, uh, if I come into your office and you've got a bunch of empty pizza boxes and styrofoam cups sitting around your on your desk, I'm probably not going to want to put you in charge of anything. Uh, we talk a lot about in, at our store about being extra mileage. You know, we're extra mileage. Uh, I got to go to a wedding this weekend. My niece, niece is getting married, and I told my wife, I said, I need to go buy a new suit. Well, no, no, actually, I didn't say that. She said, You need to go buy a new suit. I said, oh, Okay. So we go to the store. I walk in there. I've never had trouble picking out my own clothes. So I go up there and I see the suits are my size. I'm looking and I had to step away and I came back and there's a young man in that working in that department and he's dressed to the nines, you know, and I'm thinking, Julie's my wife says, Go ask him to help you. I said, I don't need no help. Anyway, I said, I went up to him, I said, I need to buy a suit. He said, Well, uh, what, what are you looking for? And I said, well, I just, you know, what I told him what I was doing. And I said, I hadn't bought a suit in five years. He said, oh, they got the pleats and the baggy pants. I said, the sagging rear end. I said, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I look like. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he took me, pulled out a couple suits. And, and uh, he said, turn and face me. And I turned and faced him. And the suit was gapping a little bit right here on the right side. He said, are you right-handed? I said, yeah, I'm right-handed. He said, well, I said, why? He said, because your shoulder's lower on the right side because you use that arm all the time. I said, I felt pretty good about myself until I walked in here. <laughs> and, and then he said, uh, he said, uh, I said, well, is this a all weathers? I mean, like all year round suit? He said, well, you want an eight gauge, you want an eight gauge 110 thread, thread count. I said, oh, okay. Uh, he said, if you get up to around 140 or 150 thread count, your suit wrinkles up and you look like you slept in it about 10 o'clock that morning. I said, oh, okay. Well, what kind of, how much uh, sleeve do you want showing on your shirt? I said, uh, I, I don't know. He said, well, quarter inches or four and a half, four and a half inches from the end of your thumb. He said, I wear five inches because I want an inch to show. I said, okay. So he showed me both ways. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, what kind of shoes would you wear with this suit? It's a blue suit. I said, he said, brown. Well, why would you ask that? I said, he said, brown. I said, well, I wear black. And I'm like, well, you know, and he went on and on and on. And he said, I said, well, I guess I could, well, Julie says, we're going to get a tie because go with your new suit. So I got all kinds of ties. I said, what kind of, what width my tie? He said, well, with your ties the same width as your lapel. I said, oh, okay didn't know that and the point being is that he went the extra mile he could have said those 42 regulars are up on that top rack of you help yourself but he didn't do that he he, he told me stuff that I didn't know and now I know I got to walk like this because my right shoulders you know my right shoulders down more than other you know the point being he went that extra mile to, to make me look I'm gonna look pretty good Saturday I <laughs> as good as I can anyway so and, and that's what I like to see from my employees. I want somebody that, that if they're walking across the parking lot and there's a piece of paper on the ground, they're going to stoop down and pick it up. And I like what Peter said, I, you know, the worst thing I want to hear somebody say is for me to tell them something, and they say that's not in my job description. I don't want to ever hear that. I write the job description. I'll change the job description. Because <laughs> I don't want somebody coming in telling me that that's not what they signed up for. Uh, if the tra trash can's running over, you know, maybe go into the trash. You know, and I think that that's, I, I think it's just a taking pride in what you do and how you do it uh, and, and being an extra mile. Thank you. Please join me again in thanking all three of these panelists for giving their time and coming to speak to you today. On behalf of the college, my sincerest appreciation for your being here. This concludes today's session. Thank you.